face of a savior with the heart of the father you're all we need you're here with the hands of the healer with the power of his spirit you're all we need Just a whisper of your name Can silence wind and rain At the mention of your name Silence when I 
privilege to come together to worship God in this house. How many of you count it a privilege? Amen. If you would count it a privilege to gather together in the house of Jesus, would you shout a big hallelujah? Amen. 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 So this morning I want you to turn your attention to Philippians and chapter 2 verses 12 down to 16. Paul is writing to the church at Philippi and I want you to capture because there are so many people speaking so many other things. And they take it out of scriptures, but this morning I want you to capture what the Spirit of the Lord wants our church to understand and understand and know and follow. I want you to read Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 down to 16. Can we all read it together, everyone? Therefore, my dear friends, everyone, read it together. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God, without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine amongst them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in what? Wayne. That I did not run or labor in Wayne. In fact, Paul is telling to the church at Philippi, church at Philippi, you need to understand God is the one who works in you. God is the one who works in you. And he works in you so that he would bring out his will. He will bring out his purposes and he will fulfill his good purpose in you. Amen. Turn to someone and say, God. 
Come on. Can I hear you? God. It is God who works. Amen. It is God who works in us. So he is reminding the church in Philippi. Philippi, understand. It is not you who works out the good purpose. But it's God who works out the good purpose. But while he is saying this important statement that God is the one who is working this good purpose, he is actually giving a list of things that the church at Philippi must do. Amen. So sometimes we think, hey, I know that God is the one who is working this good purpose in me and therefore I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do anything. No, no, no. While he says, God is the one who is doing this good, great thing in your life, where he is bringing forth the good purposes in your life, he is actually giving a list of things that the church at Philippi must do. Can we go through that list? Are you ready? Number one, turn to someone and say, work out your salvation. Hey, it's God, right? It's God, right? Yeah. Philippi? The church is at Philippi, I want you to know, it is God, it's true. It's God who works out His purposes. But you have a set of things that you also must be doing. While God does, you, turn to someone and say, you, you work out your salvation. You work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Obey, okay, second important command, obey. Like, like you always have obeyed. Do everything without grumbling and arguing. Become blameless and pure without fault. Hold firmly to the word of life. Hey, while God is working out his purposes, while God is doing what he does, and he does it perfectly well, church at Philippi, you got to do certain things. This morning I have four important belief statements as a church together. Okay, are you ready? Let's read through these belief statements. Number one, I believe and we believe in the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. We believe that salvation is by grace alone, by faith alone. It is by faith alone, it is by grace alone that no works can ever achieve the salvation that is already achieved for us. It's not my works that any man can boast. It's not our works that any man can boast. It is his work, his grace, our faith in Jesus Christ. Thirdly, can we read it together? We believe, everyone together. We believe that God, come on everyone, God is faithful to keep us to the very end. Can we give the Lord a big hand of praise? I'm God, it is God who will keep us to the very end. Now, three important statements about God that we believe. We believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Yes, we believe that nobody can actually work out their salvation, but that God has worked. And therefore, I believe in the work of God. And therefore, I am saved. I believe with all of my heart that it's God who keeps us till the very end. While we believe these three important statements, I want you to add this fourth important, important statement, which is found in the word of God. I can prove it again and again through scriptures. We also believe, everyone reading together, we also believe that we too have been given this sacred responsibility to stand firm till the very end. We too, come on, turn to someone, we too have the sacred responsibility. Therefore, this is what God is actually handing over to us to. While he has finished, while it's by his grace alone, while it's just by faith in him, while he has done everything and he is the one who will keep you till the very end. He's saying, come, I am giving you the sacred responsibility, church. I'm giving you the sacred responsibility. And what's his responsibility? To stand firm. Everyone says, stand firm. Stand firm till the very end. That's why Jesus, when he was speaking to his disciples, he spoke in Matthew chapter 24, 9 down to 13. Can we all read it together? Then you will be 
handed over to be persecuted and to put to death and you'll be hated by all nations because of me at that time many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness the love of most will grow cold but the one who stands firm can we all read together the one come on everyone the one who stands firm till the very end will be saved what should we stand firm till the very end? We got to stand firm till the very end through the persecution that we will be facing. We got to stand firm till the very end through all the false teachings that will come. We got to stand firm till the very end while we have a rampant sinful generation that is surrounding us. We got to stand firm. This is a sacred responsibility. Turn to someone and say sacred responsibility. While he does everything and he has done everything and he continues to do everything for us to make us stand till the very end God has handed over an important sacred everyone says sacred sacred responsibility to continue on to stand on till the very end and this morning I want to talk about five important important things you got to do and I got to do as a church new life assemblies of God has to do in order to continue on to be the people of God in order to continue on to be the working out the salvation of God till the very end while we go through persecutions while there is going to be an onslaught of false teachings while the sinful generation around us is going to be rampant in its sinfulness we got to continue and this is the sacred responsibility and the first and the most important thing I want you to understand as a church is hey love know and love the standards of God know and love the plumb line of God's standards that's a plumb line that God drops down you know what's a plumb line okay you know what's a plumb line now I don't think we have plumb lines today because we have that bubble that helps us understand whether whether the walls are are actually straight or not so there are new gadgets that have come but but in the olden days they used a plumb line a plumb line is something that would vertically drop down to understand whether the wall is actually built straight is right is built right and therefore let's go to uh, uh, Amos and uh, let's understand what the Lord says in the book of Amos and Amos chapter 7 verse 7 and 8 this is what he showed me the Lord was standing by a wall and that had been built true to plumb with a plumb line in his hand and the Lord asked me what do you see Amos a plumb line I replied then the Lord said look I'm setting a plumb line among my people Israel I will spare them no longer I'm setting a plumb line amongst the people and I will spare them no more. In fact, God cannot and will not step down from his standards. God is God because of who he is. Just because we are sinful. Just because we continue to sin in this world. Just because we do whatever we want to do. We can't bring down God's standards. Are you listening? That means for God, divorce is always a divorce. Are you getting it? Will he, be, will he be upset because of the victim in the divorce? Yes. Will he come? Will he be compassionate? Will he come around? Will he actually turn around? And he, will he be compassionate about the one who is going through a very, very tough divorce? Yes, he will. But for him, standard is that there is one man and one woman coming together in marriage and God honors that marriage covenant and he never ever steps down from that covenant that he makes with that married couple. Will he be gracious? Will he ever love? Will he continue to love even through our mistakes? Will he be compassionate to us when we sin? Yes, yes, yes. Will his mercy reach out to us when we turn to him? Absolutely yes. And I have no doubts about it. But God's standards. Everyone say God's standards. And just because of our sinfulness, let us not bring down God's standards. Because God's standards are God's standards always. The problem is that the church of Jesus Christ in the 21st century is beginning to compromise on God's standards. We want to bring God to our standards. We are bringing the plumb line to our crookedness. No, 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 no. God's standards are always God's standards. Amen. Are you listening this morning? If you are listening, would you shout a big hallelujah? Amen. Amen. 
listen to this very carefully because somehow some way we want to pull down his standards to our standards and make make the bar so low make the bar so low and we cross over it and say god's grace god's mercy and god's absolutely god's grace is there god's mercy is there but don't ever bring down god's plumb line his standards David says, how I love the law. How I love the law. Somehow, some way in the 21st century, we believe and we have been psyched into understanding inside the church that the law is a curse. The law, no, no, no. We shouldn't, we shouldn't even think about it. We shouldn't even talk about it. We shouldn't even preach about it. No, 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 no. David is saying, how I love, everyone say, how I love the law. In fact, you need to understand when Paul talks about the law as something that is not to be, to be really embraced. He's not talking in the sense of, hey, we detest the law. No, no, he's talking in the sense of how the Israelites and how the Jews and how legalistically the law has been applied for the free salvation given. And he says, hey, you know what? We are not bound by the law. We are not bound by the law. True, we are not bound by the law. But yet, the law gives us a clear standard of what God is and what He expects of us. And as a church this morning, the problem is we apply the law only to the others. We apply the law to the others. That's the mistake. The problem is we judge people by the law. No, 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 no. That's not, that's, that's not something that I need to do for somebody else. But I need to embrace the law and say, law of God is lovely, is beautiful. These are the standards God has that I need to measure up. Not because of my own strength and my own effort, but by His grace. Everyone say, by His grace. With the help of His Spirit. Everyone say, with the help of the Spirit. God is able to help me measure up, measure up to His standards. It's not my standards. It's his standards. And therefore, only he can, not me. And therefore, I depend on him. For that, don't destroy the bar. Don't destroy the bar. Love his law. Love his law. This morning, turn to someone and say, say love. I love the ways of the Lord. What is the law of God? What is the standards of God? The standards of God is his word. The standards of God are his principles. These are the first principles that God has given out in his scriptures. These are the standards of God. This is the first principles of his word. This is the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit is the standard that God is expecting of us. Love, gentleness, patience, kindness, peace. Long suffering. This is what God is expecting as a fruit that comes out of this interaction with the Spirit. His principles, His word, the fruit of the Spirit, the life and the teachings of Jesus Christ. Not as a yoke of slavery that we need to be putting on us, but as a standard that God helps us measure up to by His grace, by His help. With the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are you with me this morning? If you are with me, would you shout a big hallelujah? Amen. Secondly, now we can't do this. We got to love the law. We got to embrace, embrace his standards. And we got to be led and live by the spirit of the living God. Secondly, the church needs to understand. Hey, if I need to work out my salvation with fear and trembling. Hey, if I have to continue on in the sacred responsibility. I need to help. I need the help of the Holy Spirit. Because without the help of the Holy Spirit, I cannot. And therefore, I need to keep in step with the spirit. I need to have the spirit along with me. And therefore, this morning, I want you to understand that we need to be in step with the spirit of the living God. And I want you to turn your Attention to Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. So I say to you, what does he say? Walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the sinful desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. 
The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. This morning, I want you to know, as we embrace the law of the Lord, as we embrace the standards of the Holy Spirit, as we say, God, this is the fruit of the Spirit, and I want to live by the fruit of the Spirit. These are the principles of God, and I love to live by the principles of God. I know that I can't do it, and therefore I need the Holy Spirit. Turn to someone and say, I need the Holy Spirit. We have known the ways of the Lord. We know the principles of God. We know this is right. How do we detect the false notes from a true note? It's because we have a true note. And that's why we can detect the false note from a true note. If you don't have a true note with you, you can't detect a false note because a false note is as close to a true note. If you're in Chennai, join us for our worship services in English at our Little Mount Center at 6.30 a.m., 8.15 a.m., 10 a.m., 11.45 a.m. or at 4.30 p.m. We have worship services in English, Tamil, Hindi and Telugu. For more details, visit nlag.in.